It's time for the mic drop. I and each show by going deep on one topic affecting our community and hopes we can all learn a little more. Now, in case you haven't heard, District Mainstay Politics and Pros has become the first bookstore in D.C. to unionize its workforce after employees voted to ratify their first collective bargaining agreement. Now, let's go ahead and put our hands together rhythmically for this, hopefully a little more coordinated than I just did. According to the United Food and Commercial Workers International Union, Local 400, can't leave that out there, the three-year contract builds on previous benefits and should provide for better scheduling for employees, protections against just cause, discipline, or firings, establishes a labor management committee for workers, and most importantly, better pay. Let's go ahead and put our hands together for that. And before you ask, no, I don't have a part-time job at politics and pros or anything like that. I'm just pro-labor, which means I'm pro-union. You know what? You should be too. Something like 99.9% .9 of the people living in this country, including me, are labor. And it's unions that have our backs in the workplace. Without them, we would have no protection from whatever management decides to throw our way. And I'm not going to stay in here and bore you with a history lesson other than to say that labor unions have a long history in this country going all the way back to the New York journeyman tailor strike of 1768. You remember that one? And it's been through them that we've gained standards like the eight hour workday and a minimum wage. Now, don't get it twisted. Unions have had their problems, notably the exclusion of women, minorities and immigrants, basically anybody who wasn't considered a white male. But oftentimes, these excluded groups would form their own unions, winning rights in the workplace that benefited everybody, regardless of sex or color. And even as these gains were being made, or maybe because of them, there's been a strong anti-union presence in parts of our business sectors and politics. The labor movement suffered losses in the 80s, and by the end of that decade, only about 17% of workers were organized. That means 87, 83% were just twisting in the wind. As a result, labor and pro-union leaders did the only thing they knew how to do. They organized rebuilding what had been lost and working to cultivate the next generation of leaders. And the work seems to be paying off. Now, the pandemic might have helped and of course, Joe Biden saying he wants to be the most pro-union president, leading the most pro-union administration in American history. Certainly that helped. But lately, we've been seeing a lot of firsts in, union, in the unionization game. Amazon warehouse workers in New York got their first ever this year. 4,000 Google cafeteria workers recently unionized. And the whole DMV dodged a bullet like Neo yesterday when a tentative railway labor agreement was reached. Now listen, bottom line for me, I'm always going to be pro-union. I'm always going to be labor, even when I eventually join the 1%, because labor is the people. And I, for one, can't forget where I came from. 